The bottom line is you really want to, to see each position to its fruition. This is ULS. This was recommended a while back, back in June. And all the things I've been talking about lately about great setups, such as acceleration, persistency, et cetera, this one had it. It's also an IPO. And your first pullback at an IPO is usually a really good time to get in, second only to buy at B when that occasionally does set up. And there's lots of caveats for that. But the first pullback, great setup to trade. And you notice that, again, we had persistency and acceleration and then a nice, fat, deep pullback. So this was the recommendation for the day. Entry of 4025, protective stop of 3525, IPT of 4525, and it was a first deep retracement. So entry was here, stop was way down here, and IPT was way up here. Now this is how it shook out. And we take partial profits, obviously, when we hit that initial profit target, or for those who don't know the methodology, we put on a full loaf. We don't scale in, but we do scale out. When the initial profit target is hit, we take off half of the shares. And as I talked about a few weeks ago, that reduce, reduces your exposure, especially like on the upside when as a stock gains price, it becomes more and more and more of your portfolio, which creates more and more volatility in your portfolio. By taking half of those shares off, that helps to dampen that volatility quite a bit. Also, this hybrid money management, as I preach, sort of helps to, to solve for some of the problems with a longer term trend following as i preach every week almost longer term trend following does have its problems as you saw last week the tfm 10 percent system i think had about a five thousand dollar drawdown and then that recovered about half of that and then gave it all back up again in the queues and and we'll take a brief look at that in just one minute but anyway uh that was the entry 400 and 200 and like i said you're you're taking off shares because for instance in this case the 200 shares is now at 50 something and it started at 40 something okay or 40 so now you've got $1100 more times 2 so it's $2200 more and if you're in a 100k portfolio like this model is showing then that's an extra 2% in this one particular stock 2% of the entire portfolio and every now and then you get one that really takes off and then that number can really grow. But when you're scaling out, it does help to, to mitigate that. So it would be 4% or 5% if we didn't have, if we wouldn't have scaled out of half. But anyway, so this is how it shook out so far. The buy was here. We sold half at this level here. And in my particular case, here's my trades. I try to mimic the service as best I can in my model account. I do occasionally use a little discretion and some other things. It, and the discretion I use it would be within the normal parameters of something that I would suggest doing uh, as to improve your performance as you get better and better and better. If you're brand new to trading service, then yeah, by all means, follow it a little bit more mechanically, at least initially. And then once you get your feet wet and understand discretion, maybe start adding that layer of discretion on taking profits a little bit early. Looks like that's what I did in this particular case, but I, I noticed I have a trail stop. I'm not sure why. I might've been trying to squeeze some more out of it. And then I made a little bit less than $1,000 that I was hoping for on that. But the real money's in the second loaf, as you can see here. So the second loaf on a mark-to-market -market basis, I took the snapshot earlier today, and I think it closed somewhere around here. So the 200 remaining shares comes to a profit of 22.50. So you add all that up, about 3,100 and a half, 3,150 or so round numbers, 3,152, I guess, exactly. So it's better than a poke in the eye. On a 100K account, obviously, $3,000 and change is over 3%. So that's a, that's a decent move for the overall account. Percentage-wise, on the individual position, it's pretty good, too. We have our first short. I don't know if it's the first short of the year. Might be. I'd recommend you do ease into shorting. It looks a lot easier than it really is. It looks a lot cooler than it really is. It's a lot tougher, believe me. And there's an old adage, all shorts tend to go against you and initially go against you. And boy, I tell you, that sure does seem to be true. But we had this nice little first thrust set up after this stock made a bit of a triple top. It has a bit of that, and it's a pattern I've never really traded or anything. It's something I casually notice. It's the three drives to the high, where the market probes higher, probes higher, probes higher, and then fails. 
I, I would not try to trade that or any other bigger picture technical analysis in and of itself, except for maybe something like a cup and handle, which also dovetails in with bow ties and first thrust and things of that nature. But anyway, so you see you have a first thrust down after this triple top or three drives to the high, whatever you want to look at it. And use just to just real just to rewind for a second, use this bigger picture technical analysis to help you kind of frame everything. Okay. But wait for a setup within that bigger picture technical analysis pattern. That kind of gives you a, a double barrel approach a, a, a bit to it, or kind of a Russian doll type approach. But anyway, this was the recommendation on 729. Uh, by the way, this date here is the date I first recommended. It might take a few days or even a week or so to trigger. But uh, people will ask me, well, Dave, you didn't update this date. It's like, no, that's because that's the date before the trigger, right? That's the date I first found the setup. So and it, this is for my use too. So I can go back and see when I first recommended, I can back the chart out and see where it was. But anyway, first thrust down, and those are the parameters, entry of 62, protective stop of 68.50, and an IPT of 55.50. That's initial profit target where we unload half. So the entry was here, stop was up here, and the initial profit target was here. Now let's zoom in a little bit and pick it apart a little bit. And I wanna talk about the possibility of using options, and then we'll get into this options a little bit more deeply in a few minutes. But you were to short 300 shares at $62 a share, that comes to almost $19,000 in margin per 100K. So you have almost 19% of your account, so to speak, allocated to this one position. And that's a little bit on the scary side, but you got to realize that you do have a stop. And so you're going to stop out at a 2% loss, which is $2,000 on 100K, obviously. So technically, your max risk is only 2K, but with a short, as you know, you have potentially unlimited risk. Now, the reason I use unlimited is. In this case, we do use stops, okay? So if it blows through the stop, we'll get out at a little bit more damage than, than we intended. I mean, a stock like this one, a big, fairly thick established company is likely not going to double overnight. So we don't have to worry about things like that. But there is always that risk out there, especially on the short side. And I'll talk a little bit about that unlimited risk. But anyway, so... I grabbed the options trades off of this. And initially I bought three options at 342. And those were the 65s when it was trading around 62. So those options were about three points in the money, thereabouts. And I paid a little premium on them, but not a tremendous amount, only 42 cents per option and to me that seems that seems worthwhile okay because if i were to short this thing i'd have to put up nineteen thousand dollars per 100k in margin whereas for a thousand dollars that my max risk mimicking the service would be three options at again 342. now i did notice that i got to thinking about it. it's like well wait a minute dave if you have three options how are you going to split that up are you going to sell two at the IPT, or are you going to sell um, one? And so I decided to buy one more option at 349, as you can see it here. And that way, and and initially I just put in an order for a double. When I when I'm trading an option, nine out of ten times I'll put in an order for a double, and I'll show you one of those in one second. And that way for half, and that way I pay for my option position and get a free ride, so to speak, or a free roll. But you can see, here's the extra one that I put on at 349. So one thing that was kind of crazy, remember, it seems like all shorts go get you. The day after we put this on, I was like, mother father, we had a $1,521 loss on the options. I'm sorry, on the short position, okay? Now, in the options, I didn't write down what they were because I didn't want to look at it, but the options pretty much evaporated. And that will happen. When you place an options trade, now, if you get really deep in the money, then obviously you don't expect it, but it's like 
when you have something that's kind of at the money or slightly in the money and you have a position go against you like this, those options evaporate so quickly that, and, and I don't want to create bad behavior, but when a case, let's say this thing went up to 67, 68 or whatever, hits the stop the in the underlying, I would just leave it on because by that time, the options probably were 50 cents or less or whatever. And just in case the whole world comes unglued, I have it on the books, okay? Um, one more thing to think about, and we'll get into this in a second when we get into the actual options part. But one thing to think about is, is sort of like taking your loss up front. So for me to take this position in a model account, I'd have to risk $2,000. But in my case, I'm like, you know what? Let's just buy these options. So I'm risking $1,000. And then I, I did an add-on. So risk a little bit more there. But then that's my max risk. Now, I, I'm making it sound a lot better than, than it might be. And we'll get to that in just one second, some of the, some of the caveats, okay? Now, one thing I did want to show you here this was kind of an S and G type of trade, and I bought one option at forty cents, and I forget what strike that was. Oh, it was sixty. Okay, so I bought the sixty put at forty cents, and then I flipped out half at eighty cents. Okay, so I just bought two, just kind of an S and G type of trade, and I did do this across multiple accounts, but I didn't do it in a big way. Just a couple of options here and there and put in limit orders to flip out half and those got hit today earlier today so now i have a free roll on that one position so i wanted to show you this not to encourage bad behavior but to show you that if you wanted to kind of step in and, and gingerly get your feet wet you could maybe go out of the money a little bit and buy some options in this case it didn't seem like they were ridiculously expensive Keep in mind, and I know like one of you guys was a little concerned about his first option trades, and I suggested we'll go way out of the money, and they were way out of money options. The 60s, the 55s, I think were 15 cents each. So it's $15 a contract. Buy a couple of contracts of those if you're looking to get your feet wet, okay? Not as a not as your bread and butter, not as something you do every day, but if you can get a couple of contracts for 15 bucks, okay, that's 30 bucks, then you know, have pizza on Friday night if you lose it all as opposed to a ribeye okay and that's what we're talking about the facebook group all right let me look at the show you what's going on with the tfm 10 percent system real quick and then we'll we'll get back to the options talk so these are the zones and jeff who's here tonight uh before i shut down everyone <laughs> had to kick everybody out and start over um hopefully he came back uh, anyway, Jeff pointed out that I, I always said that if we get below 10% from the 50 week closing high, which would be around 50 50 in the SP 500 right now, okay, then the market could be in trouble. And if it closes below that 50 week moving average, then you probably want to think about getting out that silly little rule. And it just kind of blows my mind. And this system's been out for a while. And knock on wood, the walk forward real time testing with real dollars has actually worked out pretty cool. But if you go back in time, and you know, there's no guarantees, and, and this is a free system, so I'll give you your money back, it doesn't work. Once it gets past 10%, the market's in trouble. As a general statement, Jeff's pointed out that he likes to get out of the way at 5%. Now, he's going to get it whipsawed a little bit more, but he's also going to get out of the way long before the market gets in real trouble so right here at five percent he might have looked to get out of the market and you can see this was just a fake out and then the trend continued higher so that's the sell rules i'm not going to go through them in a lot of detail you can pick them up on youtube or on my website davelander.com but the last sell signal was here and then the buy signal two bars of landry light in a close anywhere above the 10 percent line or within 10% of the 50 week closing high. We're gonna look at that. So last buy was there and so far so good. It's had a pretty good run. And I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully we are in this for a long, long time. Now, just for SGs, as I've been saying quite a bit over the last couple of years, or year, I guess one year, uh, for SGs, I bought 100 shares of the Qs, and I have older presentations where I show the actual trade. 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3.1949, 3
And way up here in the 500s, I was starting to look like a pretty decent position. Still looks pretty good, though. You know, it's, it's kind of like, as I often preach, when you stop, let's say you're up 20,000 in position, like I think this one was, and then you stop out and you only make 15,000. It's like, would you rather have $15,000 or zero? And and I know it's like we, we do all this mental math, and, and I think we made uh, like five grand or whatever in NNE not that long ago. But if you look at the numbers at the peak, the numbers were absolutely ridiculous. Now, I don't want to back too much into that, but there are things you can do. If you have options, you can sell out and buy like an out-of-the-money S&G type of option. But anyway, you can't look at how much you lost in the end if you're profitable overall. And, and I know it's a tough part giving some up, and that's why within the core methodology and stocks, individual issues, we are taking partial profits. And we do the same exact thing in crypto but anyway yeah it's 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 a lot to give up it's eight thousand well in this case right now it's close to eight thousand dollars you would give up if it stops out now if it comes dangerously close to stopping out and then takes off again then maybe you're looking at a twenty five thousand dollar gain overall of open profits and then you you would have some drawdown to that obviously in the end so i'm sort of backing into something i've talked about quite a bit all trades eventually end badly and that's something that can really work on your psyche quite a bit until you really wrap your head around and believe me i still get affected quite a bit when i'm like geez i can't believe i just gave up that much money but then overall net net i'm ahead of where i was a few weeks a month or years ago then uh you know quit your bitch and as i tell clients when they bitch about giving up open profits in the end uh, you know send me that money keep out 100 200 bucks whatever massage costs nowadays go get your massage center yourself and just completely forget about that trade find a happy place i'm sorry that trade upset you send me the check and in 30 years of doing this i haven't received a check in the mail at least for that i have gotten tips which is nice uh, i'm not gonna uh i'm not gonna object to a tip 